Excellent. These will be showing us the ALPC exploit, yes. or also known as the Alpaca exploit, uh, locally here <laughs> in, in uh, the Metasploit dungeon. Yeah. Uh, so there are the alpacas. Um, so this is <laughs> going to be uh, the target system. Um, so I write ransom commands, who am I? Low MSF dev, so low privilege user. Uh, here's the admins group, the user I am is not in the group. Uh, so then back over here in Metasploit, I don't have a session yet. Let me go ahead and do that. Uh, so session three open. Uh, you can see I'm the low privilege user over here. Um, Set session three, and everything should be good to go. So when I run this, hopefully, yes. Okay, so get UID, uh, I am system. And yeah, that's the Windows 10 host. So everything works out well, going from non-admin user to system, um, taking advantage of the vulnerability. Uh, this is an un unfortunate side effect uh, right now, how it's done. Um, since it's kind of printing or save print output, uh, need to add an improvement to kind of kill that screen there. But um, so what this actually does is it will search for print config.dll. There's a driver file repository, um, create a hard link and see Windows tasks. Uh, it's one of the places that's searched for um, for the security uh, of writing DACLs. Um, so, it does that first, overwrites the DACL, uh, and then we inject our payload um, right here into Notepad. We put our payload loaded into memory, use reflective DLL injection uh, to run the exploit code, which reads our payload from memory as well, and then overwrites print config. Um, and then after that, we kind of kick off a print job, which will load the print config.dll we overwrote as system. Um, so the school service will actually load that. Uh, so yeah, pretty cool. Uh, get system access. So. Nice. Now, now I've heard that <coughs> you can split. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> now I've heard you can split this exploit into two pieces. You can write the DACL and and uh, update the hard link first, and then exploit it later. So you can sort of like leave it as sort of like an Easter egg, almost like a almost like a pre persistence within a system, yeah. and then later do your privilege escalation even after it's patched because you can't tell that the file system's already been modified. And of course, let's just scan the whole file system. But basically, a system that's not vulnerable can still be re-exploited against this vulnerability. Um, uh, yeah, so the, um, the kicking off the, the print, uh, if you, you don't have to do that right away. Mm -hmm. uh, so you could definitely just kind of leave it there on the system and then just have a handler up listening if you want. Is there enough information in the Metasploit module to be able to tell like where it wrote the, uh, the file so that you could, you could resurrect it later? Um, that, I do not have that in there. That's part of the C code. Mm -hmm. um, it searches for the path, what the original exploit did. It searches the uh, file repository for a file in there, uh, yeah. and then overwrites that. It might be interesting to make that like a configurable path so that we could at some point patch that in, and then the user could say, hey, I'd like you to pause, and then later you could do like a resurrection. Um, and then after the patches <laughs> get applied, you could still uh, re-exploit it. Yeah, that, that'd be cool. Uh, definitely lots of uh, enhancements that could be done for this module. Awesome. Yeah. All right, thank you. Excellent.